Chicks and ducks and geese better scurry. We are back. You're listening to Offstage and On the Air with Lisa Sheps and Nicole Shiro. Now we're going to switch gears, talk to the folks at different stages, and that is Mr. Norman Blumensot, uh, Ms. Taylor Flanagan, Hi. Ms. Karen Jambone, and David, nope, not David Blackburn. We're just going to stop at Those Karen three. Jambone. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we are enough, you guys. Fun. There we you are go. Enough. You are enough. So uh, y'all are doing member of the wedding yes. by uh, Carson McCullers. Yes. Uh, somebody tell us what this show is all about. It's about a lot of things. Uh, it's, you talked about a relationship musical earlier. This is a very much a relationship show about a young girl who is searching for her place in the world, and she's on the cusp of womanhood. She's 12 years old, and we all know what we were like at 12 years old when your body's changing Still and your, your, emo- yeah, your emotions are changing, and she's going through all of that. Her, her brother and his fiancée have arrived at the house, and they are announcing that they're getting married in two days, and she absolutely falls in love with the idea of this wedding and the fact that she, she needs to be a part of it and needs to live with them ever, happily ever after. Um, and, and so it's a lot about finding your place in the world, finding where you belong, um, the relationship between her and uh, the family cook, who is a stand-in, a surrogate mother to everybody in the play because uh, Frankie's mom died when she was uh, born. Um, and, and it deals a lot with even racism in the South. It takes place in 1940s Georgia. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you, you also look at some uh, things about racism. And, um, and, and it's just that idea of growing up. Uh, comedy? Some. It's Com- what, you know, I always like to say it's a, it's a, it's a dramedy. It's a dramedy. Um, I like dramedies. I like dramedy, yeah. They're my we favorite. should all laugh a little and cry uh, a little you know, and work those emotions you have to laugh, and if you if mm-hmm. you if you don't find the places to laugh, then you, it becomes overbearing. So yes, but it's a dramedy. Come on. Now. So Taylor, yeah, what role do you play? I play Frankie, the Frankie. twelve-year-old girl okay. that's that's feeling like she doesn't know where she belongs. Tell us about her. Uh, Other well, than what we've already learned. Um, I actually we, we went to the Harry Ransom Center and um, looked at their Carson McCullers archives last week. And um, I actually wrote down um, an early draft of the show had um, stage directions that were a little longer. They were a little oh, too long. They were more like she was... a novel. Yeah, yeah. She, <laughs> well, she had already written the novel and she was adapting it to a play. And so some of these stage directions read a little bit like the novel. But I really liked this description of her. She is a dreamy, restless girl and periods of energetic activity alternate with a rapt attention to her inward world of fantasy. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I do oh. like that, yeah, too. That's beautiful. kind of... <laughs> so playing a 12-year-old girl mm-hmm. is got to have some challenges because you are an adult woman. Yeah, um, well, and and it for me, I think the challenge is... I play children a lot, um, and so for me, the challenge is not to play young, but to cha- to play the character rather right. than the age. Yep. So, you know, mm-hmm. this, this girl is different from Sandy and Miss Brody, and she's different from May and Junie B, and she's different from these other mm-hmm. teenagers that I've played. That's a great distinction. I was watching Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, the Whiz Kid <laughs> edition, <laughs> and these little 12-year-olds Yeah, are, I know. They're little, you would not, if you just, without seeing them, if you heard heard them they're like little old souls they're like old people in little bodies and you're like what (laughs) (laughs) and some of the things that frankie comes out with are are really beyond her years and we all have that within us at all ages you know we have these moments where the adults in our lives will be like what whoa <laughs> where mm-hmm. did that come yeah. from mm-hmm. and uh and so she definitely has quite a few throughout the course of the play where it's just like wow you know that's beautiful or that's hilarious or witty or you yeah. know and just Can- like just like kids at that age and she'll resort in like two lines later yeah. to being this you know little brat bratty, le- yeah. bratty little yeah. girl can you share some of those lines with yeah. us yeah well we oh, have a, well, a little yeah. oh you have a little scene a little scene thing? if you'd like yes, yes. Well, thank you. We'd us. love to have a scene. Tell it. Well, so mm. set the scene up, and and is this, this going to be Taylor alone, or something? Yes, it's going to be Taylor alone. Okay. Um, uh, and it's near the end of the first act when she kind of comes to a realization about the wedding and her place in it and where she really wants to be and why she needs to be there. And okay. she's actually talking to her young cousin at that time. But, but he's not here. But he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just pretend he yes, is. Yes, we, yeah. we will. It's, it'll be acting. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. This is Taylor Flanagan doing a scene from Different Stages production of Member of the Wedding. Don't bother me, John Henry. I'm thinking about the wedding. About my brother and the bride. Everything's been so sudden today. 
I never believed before about the fact that the Earth turns at the rate of about a thousand miles a day. I didn't understand why it was that if you jumped up in the air, you wouldn't land in Selma or Fairview or somewhere else instead of the same backyard. But now, it seems to me I feel the world going around very fast. I feel it turning, and it makes me dizzy. I just now thought of something. I know where I'm going. It's like I've known it all my life. Tomorrow I'll tell everybody. After the wedding, I'm going with them to Winter Hill. I'm going off with them after the wedding. <laughs> the trouble with me is that for a long time, I've been just an I person. All other people can say we. When Bernice says we, she means her lodge and church and colored people. Soldiers can say we and mean the army. All people belong to a we, except me. I would be remiss if I Wait, hold on, just a second. It no. took me too long to get your microphone. Sorry. I was, uh, I was enwrapped. That you should be. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that Taylor spends a great deal of the play in bare feet, and she is in her bare feet now. <laughs> <laughs> So you need I to understand. Norman, why did you choose this? What, tell us about your choice of adding this to your season. Oh, well, Carson McCullers was born in 1917, and it's 2017. And had she managed to live past age 50, it's her 100th anniversary. And so that sort of got me thinking about, about this. And, uh, you know, and the fact that the, I mean, the play deals with, you know, Lots of things. I mean, we have two children who could potentially be each considered transgender. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes. in the book, in the book, Frankie like walks around the little town in her her uh, football uniform. Yeah, scandalous. Yeah. And yes. John John Henry John Henry has plays with dolls and wears dresses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and you have this whole. African- and this was written when? Was it was written in the forties? Uh, late forties. Wow. Yeah, late, well. Uh, but it went to Broadway in, no, late 1950 she wrote it, and then it went to Broadway, uh, and she did the play, and then went to Broadway shortly thereafter. And, yeah, and so. Carson McCullers, tell them about the, the people burning the crosses on her. Oh, yeah, well, she was from a little town in Georgia, Columbus, Georgia, and um, was very much ahead of her time in terms of her idea about race relations and what was going on. And so uh, when she left Columbus, she, I mean, she lived in she lived in Paris, she lived in New York, she lived all over the place, and... Um, when she went back to Columbus at some point, uh, the, Q, the Ku Klux Klan actually threatened her and said, you have no place in this town uh-huh. because they perceived her as being uh, not, a, not a good Georgian. And as a matter of fact, for one of those reasons, she did not want any of her archives to go to any of the, those universities, and she ended up giving them to the Ransom Center. Wow. Which I found was fascinating. That is fascinating. Because she specifically didn't want her, yeah, her works yeah. in libraries that were that segregated. Were, mm-hmm. um, she wanted her works to be able to be viewed by anybody. By everybody. That well, Ransom wow. Center has gems it, that people yeah. don't even realize no. that they have. We it's saw amazing. A, we saw a portion, and it was fascinating. Yeah, it was fa- when do you guys okay. open? Ooh, this, this coming Friday. Friday this day coming after Friday. tomorrow. Woo! And, uh, and where are you playing? The, the Vortex. Vortex. At the Vortex. And how long do you play? Four weekends. Until December 9th. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And so where do folks go to get more information? And this is going to make me the happiest of all. The, they can either go to the Different Stages website or to the Vortex website. And the Different Stages web, website is differentstagestheater.org. Different yes. stages well, theater. thank you guys thank so you. much for being on the show. Thank you. That was Norman Blumensot, Karen John Bone, Taylor Flanagan of Different Stages production of Carson McCullers, member of the wedding at the Vortex Theater, November 17th through December 9th. For more information, differentstagestheater.org.